Coming up, another Republican, this one from our region, is running for governor in Kentucky next year. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. The crowded Republican field for next year's governor's race continues to grow. Somerset Mayor Alan Keck has officially announced he is running for the Republican nomination. WIMT's Keaton Hall talked to Keck tonight. With a song and a prayer. Yesterday, God, that you would direct the path of our state. Somerset Mayor Alan Keck formally announced his candidacy for governor of Kentucky. We're really excited. You know, we've got a game plan to move Kentucky forward. Uh, we're going to address some of the biggest challenges that we have in workforce, uh, in growth, and in public safety. The Republican joins a crowded field of candidates for next year's election. I'm not running against anybody candidly. I'm running for something, and that's an opportunity to lead our Commonwealth, to cast vision, to bring people together and, and move our state forward. Keck says his business background separates him from his peers. You know, I'm the only one in the race that, to my knowledge, that's really uh, led in, in both private and public sector. I've signed the front of paychecks, not just the backs of them. Keck also says his support of incentivizing maternity leave differentiates his campaign. To try to get back into the workplace after a couple weeks is just really difficult. And so again, our policies need to reflect our values. And if we're going to be pro-life and pro-family, uh, then I think that's one policy that would suggest that we are. The Somerset mayor, who was recently re-elected, says he's ready for people outside of Southern Kentucky to know his name. As people learn about Keck for Kentucky and they learn about the Keck game plan, they're going to realize this is not just another cookie cutter campaign. They're going to see somebody who's authentic, who's real, who cares about people and is willing to go against the grain if that's what it takes. The Republican primary will be in May. In Somerset, Keaton Hall, WIMT Mountain News. There are now 12 candidates vying for the Republican nomination for Kentucky governor. As Chad Hedrick explains, state Republican Party officials say this means the party is motivated to take back the governor's mansion, while Democrats call it a, quote, nasty race. It is a full house vying for the governor's mansion in Frankfurt now that a dozen Republican candidates are looking to face Governor Andy Bashir in next year's gubernatorial race. We have an embarrassment of riches uh, when it comes to the candidates running for the Republican primary to be governor. Uh, not really since 1979 have you seen so many candidates running for governor, and really that was when the Democrat Party was at its strength. The Republican Party of Kentucky does not endorse candidates in the primary. Right now, their focus is on the general election next November. We know that Governor Bashir is going to have a big war chest, and so we need to make sure that at the end of a, a primary, especially one that has this many people in it, uh, that we are well prepared to uh, take him on and support whoever the nominee is. The crowded field includes names like former U.N. Ambassador Kelly Kraft, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron, State Auditor Mike Harmon, and State Representative Savannah Maddox. The Kentucky Democratic Party weighed in on Alan Keck's announcement, saying in part, the mayor is now the 12th candidate in what is shaping up to be a crowded, expensive, and nasty race to the extreme fringe of the GOP. Next year, Kentuckians will have a clear choice between one of the most popular governors in the country and whoever emerges from the crowded, brutal Republican primary. Kentucky is increasingly becoming a Republican state. The Republican Party is touting growth and support leading to next year's election, citing the party's supermajority in the Kentucky House and Senate. We think that having this number of candidates is actually a sign of a healthy party. Uh, and we look forward to supporting whoever the nominee is. In Frankfurt, Chad Hedrick, WKYT. Several political observers are keeping an eye on former Governor Matt Bevan, who was narrowly defeated in 2019 and who has not ruled out another run. The filing deadline is January 6th, so still plenty of time. Legislative leaders could consider reinstating a primary law that calls for a June runoff election so the Republican nominee does not head into the general election with a small fraction of support. Candidate for governor and Attorney General Daniel Cameron has hinted at taking legal action against a newly signed executive order from Governor Bashir. It would give more access to medical marijuana for some Kentuckians. Cameron says the governor is going around the legislature. Um, Again, it's, I think, disappointing to see him go it, uh, on his own when he talks constantly about Team Kentucky. 
but yet you see this indiv individualized decision making uh, coming from him. So I think it's something that we need to continue to look at and, and work through deliberately with the General Assembly and I'm hopeful that they will do that in this next session. Governor Bashir's medical marijuana executive order is set to go into effect on January 1st. The General Assembly reconvenes on January 3rd. Well, hey, chilly night throughout the mountains tonight as we've uh, night has fallen and we've really dropped those temperatures quite a bit out there tonight. Take a look outside. There's UVA Wise. They're at freezing. If you look closely, you can see some of the stars out there tonight. Downtown Whitesburg is all quiet, as you'd expect. Five after 11. Temperatures, yes, they're cold. 32 in Hazard, 30 in Harlan. How about 26 Manchester, 25 Jonesville. 21 in Monticello, so we are already past pace out there in Monticello, and those dew points are low as well, so <laughs> relative humidity is coming up, but only because it's getting quite cold outside. Pinpoint Doppler is a clean sweep, and we'll continue to see that as we head through the night. Many of us down into the mid-20s, though some of those sheltered valleys could get down into the low 20s tonight. Very latest on when we could return to some more seasonable weather. That's in a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. Hundreds of people gathered tonight at a park in Colorado Springs to honor five people killed and 17 wounded in a weekend shooting. It happened at Club Q, which for decades was a sanctuary for the local LGBTQ community. The 22-year-old suspected in the attack is being held on preliminary charges of murder and hate crimes. Army veteran Richard Fierro says he pulled the suspect down and severely beat him until police arrived. The suspect and 13 victims remain hospitalized tonight. A Wolf County murder suspect's trial has been moved to next Monday. State troopers say Troy Dunkelberger shot and killed Jaron Slayback in 2020. Dunkelberger is charged with first degree murder. Police say the men were on vacation with other friends in the Red River Gorge. Witnesses say the shooting happened at a cabin during an argument. Dunkelberger's trial was supposed to start last month, but it was delayed then because of COVID. A Bell County family woke up to find their home on fire this morning. Bell County volunteer firefighters said dispatch received a frantic call about the fire. The home located in the Dorton Branch community on Arcade Hill caught fire due to a coal and wood burning stove. The fire then traveled up the chimney. No one was hurt. The American Red Cross was called in to help the family. Meanwhile, two people in Clay County suffered minor injuries after a home caught fire there. It happened at a home off Jack's Branch Road outside Manchester. When firefighters got to the scene, they found the homeowner and another person inside had already put the fire out before they arrived. Firefighters say a cell phone charger is the cause of that blaze. Both the homeowner and another person were treated for minor burns and smoke inhalation. A Lawrence County man is busted in a child pornography case. The state police electronic crime branch arrested 45-year-old Saul Carcamo on a charge related to child sexual abuse material. Police say they discovered Carcamo uploading images of child sexual exploitation online. Carcamo was taken to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. A similar arrest in Laurel County today. Earlier this month, state police say 27-year-old Michael Alex Snyder was indicted on 11 counts of possessing or viewing matter portraying a sexual performance by a minor under the age of 12. He was arrested in Lilly and taken to the Laurel County Detention Center. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. One doctor says if you are a smoker, you should see your primary care doctor to set up a screening. And if you vape, he says it's too early to tell if it leads to lung cancer, but he still issues this warning. There are chemicals in the vaping that put you are at risk of lung cancer and that are known to be, uh, you know, carcinogens that can cause cancer. And uh, in addition, you know, vaping cause a significant lung dis lung injury or lung disease. Doctors say you are at high risk for lung cancer if you have smoked for at least 30 years and are 55 to 80 years old. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, we're just days away from one of the biggest shopping weekends of the year and local businesses are preparing. Plus, a warning if you are using space heaters to stay warm. Plus, getting potentially soggier as we head towards the Thanksgiving holiday. The very latest on the way.